Hi friends, how are you all? Hope uh, you have given a yeah, NICT and uh, you're all happy about it. Actually, what happened was uh, we have a group uh, for psychiatry teachers and we we started to get the questions of like what are the questions that has been asked our, in, in our NICT exam and the psychiatry topic. And actually I was very happy after seeing the questions that was pouring in. Uh, the reason why I was happy because uh, what we have discussed many times in the notes and when it, what we have discussed many times in the uh, even the recall session that we had like uh, uh, a month before. I think uh, those questions were also asked so I was very happy. So we'll just uh, go into the uh, questions and then see the answers and uh, hope uh, everybody would have done it well. So with here are the questions. First and foremost, SPARC criteria questions are used as a tool for evaluation of. Yes, I think most of you would have got it right. Yes, eating disorders. Because uh, this we have uh, put it in our video also. And we have made sure that uh, students should read it by heart because SPARC is a question which is uh, comes under the eating disorders lesson, specifically which helps to assess the, whether the person is sick, feeling sick or uh, because of uncomfortably full or he feels that he has lost control over the diet and very importantly the weight that they feel is one stone okay so that is a c a c o and f is he feels too much of fat and he feels that food dominates his life so i think uh, we have already uh, discussed in detail in the videos so i was very happy when i read that because it gives you a nice feeling right you read something or you anticipate something and you see that in the post paper i think it gives you a nice kick i hope Everybody would have given the right answer. Uh, coming to the next question, patient with low mood, decreased interest in activities and low energy, with decreased sleep and refused to heat. Upon asking, he says, I have no head, it's missing, how will I eat? What is the type of delusion? I think everybody would have got it right. This is nothing but nihilistic delusions. Yes, the nihilistic delusions already we have told, right? Nihilistic delusions. They, they have specifically asked what is the type of delusion. So the answer is nihilistic delusion, where it is a where a person feels that no, nobody exists. Because I have been uh, uh, saying this in my uh, video also, so like in my classes also. See, actually the same type of patient that I saw in my clinical practice, where the patient told that he doesn't have the gut, so he's not going to eat. Okay, so he says that how can I eat when the gut is not functioning? So here it is just the change of the word from the gut to uh, head. So how can I eat? So after this is also most expected and I, I think the examiners are in really good mood because they want to assess whether you know about the types of delusions. Yes, that's really nice seeing this question. Uh, a 35 year old male presented with the emergency department with priapism of the past seven hours. There is painful erection of penis. In detailed history, we have that last three weeks he have been uh, taking some medicines given by the psychiatrist. What are the following drugs which causes this complication? Basically, what are the other question, what is the question is, what is a drug that causes Priapism. Yes. What is the answer? Did you get it right? Yes. The answer is Trazodone. Uh, in, the, in our notes, if you have seen that Trazodone is a Priapism. And do you remember this? What is this? Do you remember this? We have been uh, had a we had a recall session of old question papers. In that, I had the question like which of the following is a novel antidepressant, and I have given the certain options. And there we have specifically discussed about Sari and Spari. Okay, where I told that. Uh, sorry, there's a don't is a drug which causes priapism. So I, I'm, I'm cloud nine. Yes. Next, la belly indifference is seen in which of the following condition? It's 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 a most notorious question. It's a very interesting question. I think the examiner is wants to know whether this person knows some basics in psychiatry. La belly indifference is a characteristic feature of conversion disorder. Okay, that is like see uh, today uh, by uh, nine. 10 or 9.15, you are not able to walk. Okay. You are, you are walking till 9, 5, 9, 10 or something. After 9, 10 or 9.15, you are not able to walk. How will you feel? You will feel really distressed. Oh my God, what happened? Why, why is this happening to me? How is it possible? Where should I go? Whom should I go and ask for help? That is a normal concern, right? Now, when a person with conversion disorder, what is conversion disorder? It's conversion, it's nothing but it's a conversion of your psychological. There is a psychological pain. Yes. Which is converted to a functional neurological symptom 
conversion of your psychological pain to a functional neurological symptom. So basically, what happens is that the gain that uh, that uh, that psychological pain gives them a lot of guilt or uh, distress, and when it is converted to neurological symptom, naturally that guilt will not be there. So that's what is called as lab building difference. When you see in the notes, you will see actually. Again, I'm going to show you this. Uh, do you remember this uh, in our recall video, like one month before previous question papers? There was a question on conversion disorder before also. There also I have discussed about uh, uh, the question was there was about the previous year question paper was uh, prevalence in males versus females uh, children, and so after I discussed about that, I also explained that there are certain important terms that you should know. If you remember that I told something about. Uh, uh, symbolization. I told something about symbolization, and I told something about modeling here, and I told something about labelly indifference, and also the type of gain that you see in conversion disorder, which we call it as astasia abasia. So, uh, labelly indifference is actually seen in conversion disorder. And when you when I saw this question, I was very happy because it's it's, it's most 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 any any person who likes psychiatry you don't need to know the full. Uh, would I would say by heart everything. It's, it's something because this labelly indifference. Actually, I used to tell students about the clinical case that Sigmund Freud saw. This, there was a girl who came and told that she's not able to walk. When everybody in the family members are really worried and distressed, this girl seemed to be cool. Okay, this made Freud to be very curious. How can a person be so much cool when a person is not able to walk? Let me show some more. Uh, what to say? Uh, interest on this patient, and that's how he developed. He converted himself from a neurologist to a psychiatrist and he, he, he gave a wonderful contribution of psychoanalysis. So I think that law building difference is something which is very close to any psychiatrist who has taken psychiatry passionately. So I think uh, I, I, I'm very much uh, thankful to the examiner who has specifically asked this question. And I'm very, very, very happy because I have discussed this like last month in the recall video. And yes, I got this question. Reversible causes of dementia are all except. I, this is a place where I always ask. See, this is a question, notorious question, which they ask in all exams. INICT, take NEET or FMG. So all ex all students I used to say, please concentrate on this because reversible cause of dementia, you need to not, need not read many causes. There will be some seven to 10 causes, but if you just know some four to five causes, it will be useful. Even in the notes, you can see that there are reversible causes of dementia. And here we have seen that uh, in the last month series. So it's like vitamin B12, B1 and niacin deficiency where they have cho chosen vitamin B12 as one of the choice. Hypothyroidism is also one of the choice and NPH, normal pressure hydrocapacitors. So these three, hat trick, I got it. Because the, starting from the conversion disorder and the priapism caused by perthidone and this reversible cause of dementia, that too, not even from uh, uh, like what to say notes or videos. It's just from the even the recall session itself. We were able to get three questions. I was very happy. And uh, tactile hallucinations is seen in chronic cocaine use is called as formication. I think this is, is is not that much difficult. I used to always tell uh, students about this. A person comes and says that he's having auditory hallucinations. You always think that the cause would be what schizophrenia. Yes. A person comes and says that he is having visual hallucinations. What you will say it is? It is delirium tremens seen in alcohol withdrawal. A person comes and says that he is having tactile hallucinations. What do you call it as? You call it as cocaine box. Us or formulation. And a person is having this is the same. So, olfactory and respiratory hallucinations, you will have temporal of epilepsy. These are the some basic things which uh, we'll discuss as the first thing when we deal with psychiatry. So, so this uh, tactile hallucination is also called as make you bound sign. And when this is just as an hallucination, is a person comes and says that sir, I'm able to see, feel that something is crawling on my skin. That is called as hallucination. Uh, so that is called as tactile hallucination, which we call it as formigation or make you bound sign. There are people who come and say that, sir, I can feel that there are, I, I can, I believe that there are insects that is living inside the body. That is called as delusional parasitosis. So that is delusion because belief goes into delusions, whereas perceiving something when there is no stimulus is called as hallucinations. Yes, which of the following is true about lithium? It's, it's a very simple here. Okay, fine tremors. Okay, because why we always say this is that, you know, that lithium is a notorious drug. Okay, lithium is a drug which was certain important things. Any person who is 
who is very interested in lithium as a person who is uh, takes uh, who's uh, uh, who's, uh, who's an old person who is an old school psychiatrist who is very much fond of lithium they have this wonderful one words that they ask john f k gave what john f k gave what is called as lithium and second one word is that uh, we have something called as lithium is a drug which has a narrow therapeutic index that's again a uh, very repeated question and very 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 important question that we ask is what is the range of it we call it as 0.8 to 1.2 milli equivalents per liter okay and very very important point that you should know is when a person presents with fine tremors when a person presents with fine tremors it's because of that the therapeutic dosage and when it becomes therapeutic dosage yes and when it becomes coarse tremors when it becomes coarse tremors it becomes toxicity okay so that is how we differentiate so i think this is a very basic question yes and uh this is this is my god this is my i, lo I love this question a patient with schizophrenia is being treated with clozapine. The patient has to do regular blood monitoring because of what? I think this is a, this is a, a MBBS first year level question because they have specifically told blood monitoring is needed. Why? For what else they will do? Blood count, a granulocytosis. Moreover, any person who is going to any exam, leave alone INICT, any exam, need PG or INICT or FMG, should know that clozapine means a granulocytosis. Clozapine means a granulocytosis. I used to always say, why did I wait for four months before starting in close up pain? Because I'll give a lot of patients respiratory volanza pain and QTI pain. I'll wait to start on close up pain. Why am I waiting? If a patient asks me, sir, why did you give this as a as first choice? Because of the life threatening complication of a granulocytosis. So again, that's a wonderful question. This is the only question. This is the only question that I was a bit worried when I saw the question because this is the this 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 shows a, a, a some small sadistic trait of the examiner it's how because we are not going for a small exam it's an INACT exam this is the drug which is approved FDA approved this drug in march 2023 and they have asked in may 2023 the exam we call it as thropinetide so that's a only question which is very tricky only when you are very much up to date about the i would say this is not just recent ones this is ultra 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 meta 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 recent ones so this is the only question but all of the questions are basically assessing your knowledge on pharmacology basic pharmacology on prazodone and clozapine basics about what you know about uh, the dilution of uh, delusions and hallucinations because they've asked questions on hallucination tactile hallucination and delusion they have asked a question on nihilistic delusions and very very importantly the question that they have asked about reversible dementia is like it's, it's a mbbs level question i would say that like third year fourth year students mbbs students will can be asked this question so i think i think uh, as you have done a wonderful preparation for the inict i think out of these around nine questions i think seven to eight will be a clear shot and definitely this question was as, as, uh, was difficult to everybody so you need it could be neutral so you need not worry too much about it so i hope that uh, i was very happy actually reading the question paper after uh, these psychiatrists we have some nine ten professors we have in a group we discuss about questions so we, i was very happy after seeing the questions i hope you are also the same and i hope that other subjects also i was similarly where you are prepared and uh, your knowledge has been assessed in that way your long-term memory would have definitely helped you so Meet you soon, friends. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, it's done, sir.